It's hard to believe that another year has gone by. And like the past two years, we're using the last episode of SAP Developer News to look back on the year, reflect in each of our various topic areas. Before we get into the individual developer advocates talking about each of their areas, I want to talk about uh, what we accomplished as a whole uh, in, in the developer advocacy team. We really focused on new developers this year, and a lot of our content was focused both on new developers to SAP overall, but also all of you developers that are moving to a new topic. For instance, many of you are trying out the cloud in one uh, way or another for the first time this year. Next year, we want to continue to focus on that kind of content, but in particular, we're going to look at how to bridge the skills gap. We heard from many of you, particularly like at SAP TechEd this year, you feel like you've fallen a little bit behind. There's so much new functionality and new things to learn, and we want to help you uh, make that jump. This year, we also saw the return of various in-person events, including our SAP Code Jam events, and with a little luck, we'll continue to be able to roll out more in-person events even at a greater scale next year. I think everybody's looking forward to being able to get back together and meet in person once again. We introduced code challenges at a much larger scale, and we want to hear from you. Did you enjoy these little code challenges that appeared throughout the year? And of course, the big one that was part of Devtoberfest at the end of the year. And do you want to see more of these types of, of uh, small challenges that we do in the community groups uh, on the SAP community? And finally, of course, Devtoberfest. It was our big annual event, and this year was our biggest ever. Super proud of the content that we were able to deliver as part of Devtoberfest, all of which is still available online for your viewing pleasure. So if you missed any of the sessions, holidays are a great time to get in there and catch up on anything. And we look forward to seeing our 10 Devtoberfest winners at the big prize trip coming up here in uh, the first quarter of 2023. So it was a great year overall, and we can't wait to get back again next year and continue delivering great developer content for you. Oh, hey. Hey, folks. Rich Hellman here, developer advocate, SAP Devs. Welcome to my workshop. I'm currently on vacation, so I'm not really sure how my boss thinks it's okay to assign a task and make it do during my vacation, but whatever. Uh, I can do more than one thing at a time. So today I'm currently working on a wooden deer, which will eventually look like this one that I did a couple years ago. And apparently I need to do a year end recap for the SAP developer news as well. So here we go. So first we need to trace our pieces um, that I've made out of the pieces of paper here uh, onto our material, which in this case is a 12 inch by 24 inch piece of red oak. It's got some very nice uh, greens going here. Uh, I think it will really pop once we get some, uh, some finishing products on it. While we do that, let's talk about how we've had four quarterly releases of the SAP BTP ABOP environment this year. Florian posts blog posts every three months to tell us all about the brand new features coming with each release throughout the year. We had lots of new features added in 2022, so make sure to check out Florian's blog posts. Okay, folks, so next we need to cut our pieces out using a jigsaw or a bandsaw. So this could take a while, so let's talk about ABOP code jams. This year we started doing the in-person code jam events again. We did the first one on ABOP in the Newtown Square offices, and the other dev advocates have done many more on other topics around the world as well. Next year, we are looking to expand on the Code Jam events, especially around the ABOP topic. So stay tuned for more details on that. Okay, folks, uh, just wrapped up the, the rough cutting. Uh, Could have went a little bit better, but um, I think I can make that work. Um, again, this is some really rough cutting here. We're going to take it to, uh, to the sander and, and, and round off the edges real nice and, uh, and clean them up. Uh, and then we can move on to the next step, which is uh, staining in, in some clear coat. 
Which reminds me, Abop Cloud made its appearance this past fall and was highlighted as part of the opening keynote at SAP TechEd. Once again, Abop Cloud is the term used for the Abop development model moving forward, which leads to modern cloud-ready and upgrade-stable Abop apps and extensions. Oh, and make sure to check out the extensibility guide as well. So yeah, things uh, things turned out pretty nicely. There's a, there's a couple of things that I would probably change here and there. Uh, make it a little bit, uh, a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, but overall, I think it went pretty well. With that, that uh, that wraps up both of my projects here today. Um, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you in 2023. Bye for now. Thanks, Rich. There has been some really great highlights this year for ABAP. One including our new two minute of series, where we provide you with two minute of beginner content for ABAP, such as. What is ABAP, mistakes to avoid as an ABAP developer, and many more. Now, for those who are getting started with ABAP, learning that SAP provides us with a new learning journey, which now offers you 40 hours of free learning and lets you discover how to apply some of the fundamental programming techniques on SAP BTP ABAP environment. Now, ABAP also became available on Exorcism, which is an online open source free coding platform that offers code practice and mentorships on 50 different programming languages. Now, you are now able to join Exorcism's ABAP track for access to 39 plus exercises that are beginner friendly and free. Stay tuned for upcoming videos, blog posts for beginners and intermediate learners in the upcoming year. 2022 has been a great year for learning in the SAP tech ecosphere. As Tom already mentioned, we made a conscious effort this year to focus more on the fundamentals and looking at the viewing and reading figures and also looking at your direct feedback, we can see that this was well received. Being a developer is being in a constant state of learning, but not all learning needs to be on the bleeding edge. We can all benefit from revisiting some basics, and this year we did just that, digging in a little deeper too. Mamiki already mentioned the two minutes of video series on the topic of ABAP, but we also created some two minutes of videos on other topics such as SAP UI5, AI, Cloud Native, and API Basics. We also ran a Back to Basics Fundamentals series on OData, which I'm very happy to say was pretty popular. And talking of building blocks, this year we collectively, I think, leveled up in terms of the building blocks for SAP Business Technology Platform. I think it's fair to say that many of us are now more ready to explore and embrace all the resources that are offered on SAP BTP using all the tools and APIs available. And we're all more comfortable with how those tools and APIs work. I'm looking forward to exploring more fundamentals with you in 2023, in our own usual curiosity-driven learning by doing way. Happy holidays. Hola, SAP developers. 2022 was an exciting year in the SAP integration space, and I want to take this opportunity to highlight some of the innovations made available this year. Lots of new functionality was introduced in the SAP integration suite to support your trading partners and B2B integration scenarios. The integration assessment tool supporting the SAP integration solution advisory methodology was released. Also, cloud integration is now available in more regions and it can be set up as highly available across multiple availability zones in AWS. The adapter development kit, as well as some existing adapters were enhanced. New adapters were added to SAP cloud integration and adapters can now be found in the SAP API Business Hub. There were quite a few updates in the SAP API Business Hub and API management. Advanced Event Mesh is now available to support event streaming and management in your event-driven architectures. The integration suite user experience was harmonized. Now all our integration artifacts are easily accessible from the main UI. For example, your APIs and integration flows. And last but certainly not least, the edge integration cell availability in beta was announced during TechEd. 2023 looks like a great year to start planning and executing on your move from SAP process orchestration to SAP integration suite. Happy holidays and looking forward to what 2023 will bring us in the SAP integration space. Hi everyone. 2022 was an exciting year for all of us developers in the SAP ecosphere. 
and we try to cover all of the highlights right here on the SAP Developers YouTube channel. One of my personal highlights in the UI area was the release of VDI5, a brand new end-to-end -end testing framework for UI5 applications. It's the successor of UI Verify and works with the UI5 APIs you already know. It's open source, living in the UI5 community GitHub organization, and version 1 just got released a couple of weeks ago. We used VDI5 this year in the test-driven development-inspired SAP Community Code Challenge that we ran in June. And the repo for the challenge is still available on GitHub, so feel free to check it out. If you want to learn more about VDI5 first, check out Falker's fantastic Zero to Hero session that he gave during Devtoberfest this year. My colleague Michelle and I also had the chance to demo UI5 and VDI5 in the Developer Advocates download session at TechEd in Las Vegas this year. Definitely check the session out to see the whole Developer Advocates team in action. Happy holidays, everyone, and see you in 2023. Bye. This year was an exciting year for the SAP BTP SDK for iOS and Cloud Native. I've started a beginner's video series with the name of Two Minutes of Cloud Native, which is covering introductory topics around Cloud Native, like what is Cloud Native, what is containerization, and how does the Kubernetes architecture look like. Around the topic of Cloud Native, we also had a code challenge in July and a Cloud Native days at Devtoberfest with a lot of beginner's content, but also advanced topics like day two operations on the SAP BTP Kima Runtime. You still have access to the code challenge and you can try out the exercises. You also can rewatch all the Oktoberfest videos in the respective playlist right here on YouTube. In July, SAP introduced CAP support for the Kima runtime, which we thought is a huge milestone and an important topic uh, to go into more detail for you. In this year's SAP TechEd event, I have given a demo about how you can deploy your very own CAP project on the Kima runtime using Paquito build packs, Helm charts, and the CDS command line interface. Lastly, 2022 was a great year for the SAP BTP SK for iOS. Not only did Jürgen Müller re-emphasize the importance of our partnership with Apple at TechEd, but we also released V8 of the SDK together with full support for the SAP Fiori Horizon theme, bringing you the greatest user experience on your mobile devices. All links to the videos and to the content are in the description of this video. And with that, I wish you happy holidays and a great start into 2023. Hey everybody. Josh Bentley, and I wanted to give you my highlight for 2022. It actually started in 2021. I got to be a co-host at SAP Tech Ed in Frankfurt, Germany. And on channel one, I learned how to actually highlight segments and do interviews in a very cool way. And I brought that forward with the team into 2022 as the Developer Digest show. Now, I would have different deep dive segments that you may have missed, special interviews. I remember meeting with Jamie Cauley to do a demonstration on the new features in Kima. Uh, Rich Heilman had some deep interviews with uh, the ABOP team. Lots of great stuff throughout the year. Uh, but the most important thing to me was meeting with my colleagues on the Developer Advocate team and have them serve as a co-host. So either remotely or in person, we would bring the show to you together. And it was a really fun experience filming that and editing it. And really cool was the first time with me and Rich and Mamiki all meeting up in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Mamiki would show us a little bit about lighting and framing. Rich would operate a second camera and act as a director. So a lot of cool self-produced things from the developer advocate team to make this show for everybody to enjoy. So hopefully you had a great 2022 yourselves and we will see you in 2023. Hi, it's Daniel from Renana, Israel. I'm here in the kitchen next to the spice box with the basil and the rosemary. And I want to say the biggest highlight of 2022 Bigger than uh, TechEd and being involved in the SAP Build rollout and being part of the demo and that crazy uh, mess up in the middle of the demo. And even bigger than Devtoberfest where we had 20 sessions uh, on low code and no code and I was able to meet all kinds of people. And the biggest thing was just joining the Developer Advocates group, uh, being welcomed by this group of uh, 11 uh, really smart, uh, really clever, and committed people. So uh, thank you for welcoming me so graciously. And I want to wish everybody a joyous holiday, a uh, really great time with your family, and in the new year, a lot of happiness and success. 2022 is coming to a close, and what a year it's been. 
I was so grateful to have the opportunity to travel to an in-person tech ed this past November and participate in Deptoberfest, and it was a wonderful experience. But that is not the only great thing that's happened this year. The UI5 web component library for React released its first stable version, so no more breaking changes any time a minor version is released. The new Horizon theme also came out and was quickly supported on the component libraries for everyone to use. There were many more minor releases to different libraries that improved existing functionality and added new components. As a whole, 2022 was a good year for front-end developers. Happy holiday, and for the final time this year, happy coding! From my side, I wish you health, peace, happiness, and bravery in the coming year.